Tech Today has this sort of affinity for London. We're here yet again, same city, same view, but for a very different reason. We're flipping and folding. All I can say is that the Samsung Flip 4 has competition and it comes from Oppo. That's why we're here and there's a lot more on the show, of course. We're going to tell you all about smart speakers, artificial intelligence and a little bit about where tech meets art. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi saying Namaste London and let's get started. Hello and welcome to Tech Today. If this scene looks familiar from a couple of months ago, well, it might be the same spot, it might be the same city, London, but we're at a big global launch event for the Oppo Find N2 Flip. This is your first look on Tech Today. This, the magazine near the O2, is where the event has taken place. And let me show you a little bit more about what this device is capable of. hundred thousand folds on this device is what the company claims and this is the biggest cover display ever so on a flip device it especially and you can do all sorts of things of course you can see the Oppo and Hasselblad branding very clearly of course OnePlus has that partnership as well and that really means that maybe when you're talking about the color science with this camera we will be able to see some sort of development, some sort of improvements, but that you'll only see in our full-fledged review. The device obviously has a better battery, they claim, than even the Samsung Flip 4. That's something we want to test out on the show. And more importantly, fold, number of folds aside, the best thing about this phone is that one, when it is folded, this form factor can easily be pocketed, you can carry it around, but when you open it up, I, for the life of me, maybe I need to wear glasses, cannot see the crease, right? That's what they claim. It's an invisible crease. Let's just put it this way. Of course, you can see some level of a crease when light hits it, but compared to the Samsung Flip 4, this genuinely is a work of art. Now, one thing when you're comparing these two devices, and that's but natural for you to compare two flagship foldable devices from rival brands. One thing I want to understand is that they've not mentioned anything about water and dust resistance, whereas the other brands do. So I caught up with someone at Oppo to get some answers. Have a listen. Four hundred thousand folds on this particular device, very durable. The cover screen looks impressive as well, but the question that the Tech Today community would have for you, and I'm going to place that question forward to you, is why no IP water and dust resistance on the Oppo Find N2 Flip? First of all, what I really like to like always mention is IP is a certification, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a proof, it's a label that mm -hmm. you can apply for and then you can write IP. Mm -hmm. um, not having IP certification does not mean that we don't take daily life and daily use serious. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see the device, when you would unmantle the device, mm -hmm. you see there's a lot of ceilings, for example, for the, for the hinge to make sure that there is no dust getting behind the display. Mm -hmm. Even when you close the phone, because of the U-shape, it closes completely flat. So mm -hmm. there are no dust can enter like on other devices mm -hmm. in the market and get in between creating friction and, and like scratches and mm -hmm. those kind of things. Um, last but not least, for water ingress or water damage, we make sure and we do a lot of work to make sure that it, it's like life proof, I would right. call it. If there's an accidental splash of your coffee in the morning or your tea, if you prefer that, um, there should be no issue with this. Mm -hmm. um, you should not take it to the swimming pool, to the ocean, but you should also not do that with any IP rate. <laughs> That's controls. true. That's so, very um, true. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Our first impressions, initial first look of the Oppo Find N2 Flip exclusively on Tech Today from the global launch event in London. But now I'm in London and I'm working way too much. And you guys have been watching this show way too much. So what we need to do is let me explore London a little bit and you guys can explore what's happening in the tech world.
chat GPT, Bard AI, so much talk of artificial intelligence of late, the Tech Today team thought we need to get a new smart speaker. And there you have it, the new HomePod 2023 at the Tech Today studio. But wait, the last one didn't necessarily pack a bunch a few years ago. But is this old wine in a new bottle or new wine in an old bottle? Well, let's find out. So yes, at first sight, this looks almost identical to the original HomePod, which didn't do too well in 2018. But there are a few differences and the tech has gotten certainly better. Let's make this very simple for you. I'm going to tell you a few things that are good and then let's just call it the not so good about this particular HomePod. So this is a little cheaper than the original HomePod, but it's also a little less powerful. I'll explain why. It has five tweeters and four microphones. Of course, the subwoofer is exactly the same as last time around, a 4-inch diameter. It's powered by Apple's new S7 chip. The new HomePod comes with sound recognition, temperature and humidity sensors. A bunch of those sensors also existed on the cheaper, smaller HomePod Mini, but Apple hadn't activated them all along. Maybe with software updates, you'll be able to get that functionality as well. Which brings me to the good points about this HomePod. It is smart. But then there's a catch. The catch I'll explain later. The smart bit I must explain to you right now. Hey Siri, what's the temperature outside? It's about 30 degrees outside. Well, now you know. I'm shooting this in Mumbai. But now what's it like inside the Tech Today studio where we are in regulated conditions? Let's find out. Hey Siri, what's the temperature inside the room? It's 26.2 degrees Celsius. Another gripe people had with the original HomePod was that you couldn't remove the power cable at the back. You can do that with the new HomePod. I don't know how much of a difference that would actually make. But with sound recognition sensors, the one thing that the HomePod can do is if you've left this on in the Tech Today studio and we're away and supposing there's a fire alarm or a break-in, this would notify my phone wherever I am in the world that some sort of untoward incident has happened or it has detected that sound. So that is very helpful but you get that with the Echo devices as well, which we'd use for the longest time. And speaking of sound quality, given how the HomePod is designed with five tweeters and Apple's computational audio abilities, it is the most brilliant sound I have heard in the Tech Today studio. It's a loud, airy sound no matter where you are. It is absolutely stellar. And of course, if you're using Apple Music and a particular track does support spatial audio or Dolby Atmos, you can tell the difference. And there's a bunch of tracks, even old ones, classics from the Beatles and whatnot, which have been remastered. This is the ideal device for all of that. Well, since we've listed out all the good things about this device, let's talk about the things which could have been better or should have been better with the new HomePod. Speaking of Apple Music, Yes, if that's your go-to music app, then this works splendidly. But if you're using Spotify or any of these other apps, then the HomePod is not of much use. It can't be your default music app. Okay, so we've spoken about all the good stuff, change of lighting. Now let's address the not so good about the HomePod. The first thing, is the catch that I was talking about. Remember, I mentioned the catch? Well, it happens to be Siri. <laughs> I hate to say this, but Siri out of all the assistants isn't the smartest assistant. Most importantly, when you compare it to Google Assistant, like you've seen on the show, or Amazon, Alexa, Siri in India is perhaps not as useful, given the fact that we don't use Apple Maps as much. And that is the real core, the heart of the HomePod. So while Siri's voice sounds really good on these speakers because the sound quality is that good and the hardware to support it is amazing, but Siri just isn't smart enough. It doesn't always understand what you're saying, but one thing it does do well is that it picks up your audio from a distance as well. And then we get to the second point, which is competition. Competition from Google and most importantly, Amazon and Amazon has really perfected this whole home speaker space with its Echo devices, the Echo Show. That's one little gripe we have as well. On such an expensive speaker with such good hardware, Apple should come up with perhaps a screen like the Echo Show. Look, Amazon Astro, you've seen it on the show. Amazon's literally got a robot, which you got exclusively on Tech Today, which can follow you around. That's how advanced Amazon has gotten and it's darn useful. 
and has a bunch of party tricks as well like you've seen on the show before from Las Vegas. But with this, it is just a smart speaker, which like I said, is not the smartest. Our last gripe is the pricing, over 30,000 rupees for this device. And then when you're price conscious, the real competition doesn't only come from the Googles and the Amazons of the world, but it actually comes from its younger sibling, the HomePod Mini, which can practically do everything that this can at one third the price. So there you have it, the new HomePod, brilliant sound, but we'd wish it was a little smarter here on Tech Today. What's the weather like here in London? Oh, you guys are still watching. That means you're enjoying the show. I am honestly not really enjoying the weather in London. But coming out of that interaction at the Tech Today studio with the new HomePods meant I was talking to Siri. If I'm talking to my Android device, it's Google Assistant. And of course, you've seen Alexa on the show so often. But the biggest concern, whilst we are using all these new AI tools like ChatGPT and of course, all our devices at home, happens to be privacy and security. And that was the burning question that I put forth to Rohit Prasad, the man behind Alexa, and he was very candid and frank with his answer. That's something you might want to hear. This was in Las Vegas, but we also want to come to you, the Tech Today community in New Delhi, to find out what is your preferred AI? Is it Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa? Who's the better friend? That's coming to you on this Tech Today special. There are always concerns when people read media reports saying, you know, Echo devices are logging all of our conversations. But how do you respond to that in terms of placating some of those concerns? Absolutely. As you said, privacy is paramount to us. The data security is, uh, it's, we take everything on protecting your data and your privacy very strongly as we should, because we want to be that trusted service. And for that perspective, I think one thing, we, if you look at all our decisions, uh, we talked briefly about how when you speak the wake word Alexa, then the light ring comes uh, on, right? When you actually uh, start uh, the conversation, you have to say the word Alexa. Right. And it only listens when it's confident that you have heard the word Alexa on the device, then only start streaming to the cloud. So that's, uh, that's one set of uh, features. And then you can even go and look up all the data that Alexa has uh, heard you say and through your companion application or go to the website, all the data is available to you. But we also know that some people will be concerned. So you can opt out of data collection or you can opt out of human review of yeah. the data. So there's more control for you because we want you to be comfortable with the service. I have 20 plus Alexa devices in my home. Wow. So, and uh, of course I have a lot of uh, private conversations, a lot of critical conversations. So of course, uh, I'm also a customer, right? So that's the, so we want the same kind of uh, controls in your hands as you being the customer. And we are also brought in the convenience of voice to managing your data, right? You can say, Alexa, delete what you heard me say today, right? So that is, uh, those are the kind of controls we want. And uh, hopefully our customers will continue to trust us with this. any smart assistants like Google Assistant, Alexa or Siri? Google I do. It's convenient like when you're driving. They are storing all that data and the data is being applied. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Whatever I ask, they answer that. I have an Apple phone so I do use Siri. It's convenient like when you're driving you can just say hey Siri dial this or that and no, it's actually violating the privacy because there are certain things that a person just wants to keep this to himself or his or her family. But, you know, them, I don't know who are they and who are they listening to and what what kind of people are they. So it seems like it's violating. There are times that you've said something, like you're having a conversation with someone else and your Instagram or your Facebook pops up the same ads. So obviously it's listening into our conversation. That's a compromise you have to do. When you are looking for information, it's, it's available for free. So they have to get something out of it. I am not a completely against about securing your privacy. If you're not doing anything wrong, why are you worried about the privacy? It's the convenience factor which matters a lot in today's time. 
it's obvious they are storing all that data and the data is being applied against without any consent of the people which is against your rights as a citizen as a human being i was looking for a car online i was talking to my dad and you know just after 20 or 30 seconds i picked up my phone and there were a lots of cars on my <laughs> phone and facebook and instagram or so i think so there is something like that so as long as it's providing a better service if they are listening for that purpose it's good but if they are using misusing that information for something else then it's uh, definitely a violation also i feel that they are listening to us all the time because like for example if i want to buy a mattress and suddenly they hear mattress or whatever and from facebook and other places you start seeing those ads so they are constantly listening and yes i feel like that's not done dude right at the max they might target some audience it is up to you what you buy what you don't want to buy people will always target you <laughs> so that's my take on it of course i mean we do lot of talks all kinds and it's getting recorded somewhere it's kind of scary if you are only doing something wrong then i have to worry about so i don't go look at the cookies to see if it's somebody is stealing my privacy what will they do with it like if i search anything on google the other uh, platforms uh, they have the same ads popping up like there was this i think i was just like looking at jewelry last uh, yesterday and they had everything related to jewelry on my instagram all the pages popped up it is of course listening into my conversation it's not okay so you have put yourself in there saying that this is information i want so how the way they use it it's up to them so you should be completely avoiding all the search engines if you don't want anything then again if you do that you're completely out of sync with the world so you can't do that welcome back to tech today i'm your host ayush alavadi now every time we come here to london it's a nice mix of classic and modern right you have all these modern buildings here and then you get nostalgic if you take a trip down memory lane with some of these structures as well if you're getting nostalgic then we can always talk about the walkman series from sony which was quite a cult favorite now in 2023 it turns out sony wants to come back with the walkman series but this time there's a few changes and it might be a little expensive on the pocket Well here's a tech today special blast from the past or shall i say back to the future Packed a blast from the past with the launch of its new Walkman. That's right, the cool audio device is back from the 90s straight into 2023. Who'd have even thought about this? For people growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, the Walkman was the coolest gadget to carry. The swag of having it in the back pocket of your jeans and going about your day hit differently. But this was pre-smartphone or even iPod era. So why bring it now? What changes now? And most importantly, is it worth your money now? We are living in the times of Spotify and Apple Music. Well, Sony's new Walkman comes with a few upgrades, but retains the nostalgic feeling of it with classic black and gold variant. But there are a few upgrades as well. The new Walkman comes with a 5-inch display, sound processing with high-res audio wireless and a battery life of up to 25 hours and more. It comes with Edge AI and DSEE Ultimate that offers premium audio experience. It also packs the S Master HX digital amp technology that ensures reduced distortion and noise. It also comes with support for multiple audio codecs, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity that makes streaming music easier. And especially for music lovers, the device packs in a 10 band equalizer that allows a user to tweak the bass, the treble and everything in between to get the sound to their heart's desire. While the smaller gadget with the might of a sound engineering board may fit into your pocket literally, but it may pinch as well as it's priced at almost 70,000 rupees. Well, that is definitely almost the price of an iPhone, but that may be okay for a music lover and especially for the love of nostalgia. What do you think about it?
What if I told you that there's an intrinsic connection between art and technology? What if I told you we could go back to the future using art and tech? If that's sounding a little confusing for you, here's a Tech Today exclusive report which breaks it all down for you. Tech Today never fails to bring you the latest updates from the art world. And that's why today we are here at the India Art Fair. Art and tech sounds a bit off, that's it. Well, actually, art and tech have a history and that history dates back to the 1950s. And today we are going to walk you through the history of art and tech on Tech Today. Like I said, the history of tech and art dates back to 1950s when there were just these precursors of computers and people trying to integrate art with that. Next, we come to the Roaring Sixties. And in Sixties, people were plotting different points and they were trying to create images out of it. And that's how art and tech were collaborated in that time. Next, we come to 1970s, where computers were all around and they were used in companies, in corporate offices, in industries. And people were still, you know, trying to integrate art with tech. There, were, there was animation and there were other programs that were coming up. And in the next decade, when we come to 1980s, personal computing had become a big fad. And people had projects, people had applications like the Photoshop, like Microsoft's Paint, and all these platforms were used to integrate art along with tech. Next, we come to 1990s, where the internet is in its nascent stage and people are collaborating digitally to create art forms. Next, we come to the 2000s, where almost everybody has internet. You're talking about new media, there's entertainment, digital entertainment, computational art. And next, we come to the interesting phase in the history of art and tech. We talk about artificial intelligence and how machine learning and AI is able to create art. And lastly, we come to the present times. We talk about art on blockchain, tokenization of your art so that you have individuality to it. Well, it's been fun exploring the features of the Flip, the Oppo Find N2 Flip exclusively on Tech Today from Chile, London. Like I said at the start of the show, we have this sort of affinity for London. We've been coming here very often off late, but to get you the latest and greatest in tech. If you've enjoyed the show, do let us know on our social media handles. And of course, until next week, hopefully in better weather, this is Ayush Alavadi saying adios. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.